So I think, what do you want? I mean, fundamentally, when you invest, what is it that you're looking at? Largely these four things, I think you want to obviously create wealth. You're, you're investing money in equities. You know it's a 14, 15, 16% long-term compounding asset. You were saying, yeah, I want to create wealth. You want a little retirement. People like me who are getting toward the end of their career want to have a little bit of money so that we can sit. Sir is here. Sir is just retired from LNT, right, sir? So I think obviously he wants happy retirement. I'm hoping he is very happy because he's sitting right here and smiling at me. So that's fine. You want to have a lot of financial freedom because I think that's the new kid mantra today, right? If I ask my son, who's about 24, that what he wants to do, he says, I want to have, I want to retire at the age of 40. So I was asking him, what the hell will you do at 40? Because there's a very good chance that you live to 90, given that. So he says, no, 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 I want to have the freedom to make a good financial decision. I don't want to have a stress in my mind at that time. I want to be free. I don't want to work for somebody. I don't want to be constrained to a job, to a city, to blah, blah, blah. I want to just have enough money so that I'm fine. And lastly, of course, more importantly, you need to have money to have peace of mind, right? Today, if you want to sleep well, and I think that is what largely investors want. What do they do? Why do they do this? They don't, but they don't create wealth. Why is that? If the Indian stock markets have given 15% return, 16 odd percent return in the last 20 odd years, that means roughly your money has grown about 20, 25 times, right? I don't know, Amit and Sahil are the experts, they'll tell you. But yeah, if everybody's seen that, the best investment that I have is the investment that I actually forgot about. Why do we, what do we do to, there is an investor um, uh, return and there is a, let's say a market return and the gap is actually what we call the behavior gap. And that gap is huge, not only in India, it's all over the world. But why does that happen? Can you see this uh, football guy? Can you see him at the back? You know what he's doing, right? This is a goalkeeper. He's basically standing there. It's a great match. Let's visualize the World Cup. It went into a penalty shootout, right? You know. And then you know who won. So I'm not going to get into history. Argentina did that. But just imagine you're this goalkeeper, right? This is the statistical probability of what will happen. You know? That if he takes, he goes left, 30% of the time he'll save the penalty. If he goes, maybe, sorry, if he goes right, he'll save 30%. If he goes left, it's about 39%. And then if he does nothing, it's about 30%. So what do you think this uh, investor, what do you think this goalkeeper should do? Very difficult. It's one in three, one in two. The crowd behind, now just think of what, ideally what he should be doing is just hanging around here, not doing anything actually, because there's a one in third, there's a pretty good chance that he has to do nothing, he has to stand and there's a 30% chance that he will save the goal, right? But just can you imagine the stadium atmosphere? It's huge crowd, there is huge pressure, there is a lot of, I mean, there are possibly thousands of TV cameras, maybe millions of fans cheering you. So what does he do? He tries to take a left-right decision. Now, why am I telling you this? Because let's say when things are bad, 2020, for example, you open the news, you get fatalities, body counts, and the Times of India had a brilliant thing on top. It says number of COVID patients in the world, number of COVID patients in India, number of deaths, number of deaths, right? So you open the day with that, and there's so much noise. I mean, forget about it. Many people actually stopped reading the newspaper because of that. And I tell some of my friends in the Times of India that that was a stupid thing to do. Right? But that's sells, unfortunately. You look at your own, you open the TV today, you have so much of noise, right? I mean, uh, Monday morning, just to give you an example, you remember the Karnataka elections last week? Election results came out on Saturday. All the pundits said that there's a very good chance of a hung assembly and all that, right? You remember, it's very recent, right? What happened? I think obviously everyone knows Congress won the complete. I think they also are quite zapped as to how they won, but that's okay. They won and they won by a margin. So what happened in the mar so Sunday? If you open the, if you look at any WhatsApp or you look at any uh, news channel or you look at any Money Control or any of these lovely articles that are there, they say mostly the market will collapse, right? Logical. BJP got smashed. People are scared. Will this repeat itself in 2024? Will all this Atman Nibir stuff will stop? A lot of things are there. Investors like, obviously, continuity, right? So the last thing they want is uncertainty. But investors are not professional. They are also like this goalkeeper. They wanted to do something. What happened ultimately is that the reverse happened. The market actually went up on Monday morning. 
it's a different thing that it fell on tuesday morning but it went up on monday morning so don't be the goalkeeper i mean don't be the left right stuff and that's what we tend to do here right 32 most of the times because of the pressure of the crowd the goalkeeper is diving to the right 49% he's diving to the left 45% he's not sitting here he's standing there 6% of the time does this make sense to you ideally he should just be sitting there right because he's got a good chance of 30 30 but he's diving why is he diving why is he doing this because of that noise that pressure that emotion that fear that if i just stand there and if the ball goes to the right people will think i'm an idiot i didn't do anything so he does some stupidity and in most of the times he loses the penalty the penalty shootout is in some sense a dead shootout right what happens here i think the same thing we tend to do right ideal behavior is you sell high buy low it's very practical right i think if you ask me but most investors what do they do they come here at 2020 right everybody jumps into pharma in 2020 2020 was the highest influence pharma funds and what happened obviously that was the top it went down they do it again 2021 everyone thought it is the next big thing everybody is going to work from home life has changed nothing has happened we are all here right 150 people we could have done this amit by a nice zoom call right may have saved these people time to come here but we are all here so everyone thought it is like the greatest thing bought it here today people are selling out of it why because it's minus 20% and then they repeat this and they keep repeating it again and again and again why because of the goalkeeper remember the goalkeeper example remember my iceberg thing you have to take some action right you feel that something is happening i have to take action i have to take action your mind is telling you maybe not to take that action but your feelings your brain your brain is maybe logical your mind has got all its biases all the news flow all the noise and it's telling you do something do something do something and then that's what you do and then you repeat it again and again and then one fine day when sundar comes and gives you his portfolio you will say mutual fund is a shit instrument equities are bad they are horrible instruments i'm going back to fds i have lost so many investors because of that because they all come in there and they get out and unfortunately that's because humans are very emotional they are not practical and uh, you can put this into a computer and say computer run my business is a very good chance that the computer will also screw up because the computer is made by whom it's made by all of us so in some sense it will take those biases maybe 20 30 years later maybe there'll be a robot who will run our investments maybe but will we allow the robot to run it i don't think so because you need someone to actually hold your hand at that time right and this is what i was trying to say so this is actually the investment returns i don't have the exact percentage here but there's a very big gap in india it's almost like we did a survey in access mutual fund that gap is almost 6% it's almost 40% of the total return because people come here and get out here they don't stay the course right so how do you sort of protect yourself against this right and this is unfortunately this is just getting bigger and bigger this balloon what you actually need is this small little dot you don't need all this you don't need this noise you don't need this information what you need is here because what you are investing for is peace of mind you are investing for retirement you are investing for children's education you are investing for a second career whatever you are investing for what you need that information is only here what you get is all this this whole circle right and this is a part of that is information which frankly may be useful to you but most of it is here which is basically noise so if you go back and remember my goalkeeper example you are the goalkeeper here you have to be focused you have to actually just focus on that ball what you do is you focus on everything else you focus on the noise you focus on the stadium you focus on the cameras you focus on that pressure and that builds a lot of anticipation a lot of expectation that you have to do something right something has to be done so you have to figure out how to break out of this noise right so how do you change this i think this is very important so this is you lots of mistakes on this side right this is a door it's swinging here ideally you need this door has to be opened or closed by somebody like a financial partner i call them a financial coach right i think it's very very important because this is in some sense the guy who is going to actually allow the right things to reach you or not reach you right so if you can't do it yourself i think that's very critical and most of us can't i can't for example because we all are emotional beings you need someone to hold your hand you need someone to tell you don't do certain things at points of time everybody tells you what to do most people tell you don't tell you what not to do so if you are able to understand what not to do and that's very difficult right because we are cushioned right from the time we are babies because we are told 
hey, don't touch that electricity point, don't jump out of the, don't lean out of the window. So your life is a series of don'ts. So when somebody, when you have the power to do something, you do it. And most of the times you do it in the wrong sense. So you need someone to actually correct you there, right? So what does your MFT do? I mean, in, some, in this case, obviously, it's Sundar, right? What does he do? He helps you identify your goals. This is the easy part. It's quite common. If I take a poll around the room, 90% of you will say, I want to retire safely. I want to have a good future. I want to save for emergencies. I want to plan for my kids' education and stuff like that. It's very, very easy, right? This is the second part is also very easy. I think designs an investment plan, all this stuff you can do. In fact, you can do it yourself. There are enough of websites which allow you to do this. But I think the most important thing that your MFT does is to make sure that he focus, allows you to stay focused in spite of the noise. So when you are in the mood to do an action, imagine if the goalkeeper had a coach and after every shoot or just before the shoot, the guy keeps telling him, don't go right, don't go left, just stay where you are, just stay focused, there's a 30% chance that the ball will come straight at you, right? Because nobody can figure out which part of the goal the ball is going to get into. So sometimes uh, doing nothing is actually doing a lot, right? So how do you do it? You need someone who can get this for you. So this is the, this is the most important part of what you do it, right? So people tell me that, hey, Raghav, you are a... So I have, I mean, now of course it's compliance, but uh, for a long period of time, I've, I think I bought my last stock, I think almost 10 years back. So many of you, I mean, in private must be coming and tell me, hey, you must, you're damn lucky, boss, you work for India's, uh, one of India's largest mutual funds, you have so much of equity assets under management, you must know exactly what to buy. And I said, see, the fun is not in buying, the fun is knowing when to cut your loss and sell. So actually you need, I'm paying a mutual fund manager to not, to actually sell down a bad stock, which I cannot do. So whenever I feel I'm a great investor, I go and open my cupboard. 90s, I think when I started life, late 90s, it was the IPO era in those days. And I bought a lot of stuff. A lot of that stuff is just paper today. I don't think it will even give me raddi value today. I mean, raddi in Bombay means junk. I'll get probably 12 rupees a kilo. Sorry, yes, boss, five minutes, I'll be done. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but today, that's my, that's my spotlight to mistake, right? The day I feel that, hey, I'm a real hero, I just look at those mistakes and I say avoid, right? And this is what uh, MFT does for you, right, today. 